Shalom, <clears throat> Shalom. We the Rehab Israelites coming to you week in and week out, prophets and the truth and the return of the Heavenly Father, which is prophecies found in the Holy Scriptures. Before I begin this lesson, I want to give all praise, glory, honor to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahawah, Chakwadash, and the Bona elders and apostles of Great Millstone that taught us this word in truth, sincerity, and charity, and give us the understanding of the scriptures and prophecies that's playing out through the Holy Spirit, of course. And you have with the Heavenly Father's name, and you have a shout of the Son name, who in the world ignorantly and willingly called Jehovah and Jesus, and Yahweh and Yeshua, which is not the proper names, and not according to artifacts, not according to scriptures, not according to the word, man. But I'm going to just hop right in this lesson, because I really just want to do a little quick little edification, some scriptures, so you, you know, you brothers and a uh, few sisters that do watch can have, you know, to build your faith up more, and, um, Understand that the Lord is still dealing with his nation. Prophecy still got to pass. And the law is not done away with. So I'm going to read a few scriptures. The Lord will hold the lesson be edifying. This is Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am, I am not. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. And if you. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. If you got a Bible. These are the words of whom the world ignorantly and willingly, because they do this thing willingly, they get paid off. This is the words of who the world ignorantly and willingly calls Jesus Christ. Okay, but it is our Savior, and that's not his name. So he said he's coming to fulfill the law and the prophets, man. Okay, so prophecy got to unfold, which the prophets prophesied about. The words that the prophets spoke, which is the words of the Heavenly Father, has to play out. And there's prophecies that still has to play out. Okay. And the law that was set by Yahweh Shai, given through Moses, that law still stands to this day. And we are to rehearse the righteous acts and we are to continue in them until Yahweh Shai come and perfect us. You know, it's just like we can't throw away his perfection, his creation. And we can't be uh, negligent in it. It said, and you learn that being in the truth, you know, and it take time, examination, and being around men of discernment and godly men, and men that's striving and fighting that been doing it for years. That's who you learn from, because you can't learn it from being around your family, you can't learn it from being around your friends, you can't learn it from being by yourself. And I'm speaking from experience. It says, verse 18: For really I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. To all be fulfilled. So point being is, man, the Lord's law is not done away with. They be teaching that in the church, even if they don't teach it directly, okay? The actions show it. And that's madness and that's leading the people astray. It's um uh Oh, yeah, Judges 5 and 11. There you go. Oh, do I got Judges? There you go. So we'll go Judges 5 verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers and the places of drawing waters. And I'm going to stop at that comma. The places of drawing waters is speaking about servitude, slavery. Okay, because you read the scriptures, there was hewers of wood and drawers of water. You do that to a nation, you put under subjection. And our nation, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, we are under subjection under these nations. So the place of drawing waters is speaking of your place of captivity. It says, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. What's the righteous acts of the Lord? The law. Okay, loving thy neighbor. Fearing the most high, having no God before him, man. Okay, fulfilling the greatest two, and on the whole, the, on the whole law hang all of it. Okay, on the, the whole law hang on them greatest two, and that is the righteous acts of the Lord. Who is the Lord? When you click on that Lord in all caps, that's Yahweh, man, not Yahweh. But you have to have the understanding, just as we have the understanding of these scriptures and prophecies. You have to have the holy understanding to pronunciate the characters. Okay. It says, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of the, his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of Yahweh go down to the gates. So point being is, we got to rehearse the righteous acts. 
okay, in rehearsal, you're not going to get it right. You're going to mess up over and over and over and over and over. But guess what? Sooner or later, you're going to you're gonna get it by doing it over and over and over and over and over and over. Okay? Because the script is already written. We want to just get the role. That's why we're rehearsing the righteous acts. That's, not, that's why we're not being negligent in this law. And the Lord gave us pastors to show that. Okay, this is Jeremiah 3 and verse 15. It says, turn, I'm going to start at, um, I'm going to get to the point. It says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So the Lord was going to give us pastors, going to feed us with knowledge and understanding. And they're going to be on the highways and byways, okay? Some may be rough, some may be easy to approach, but the truth is the truth, okay? And in this generation, in the midst of this wicked, perverse, crooked generation I've been lied to, the truth is evil spoken of. And they push that mentality as the law is done away with when it's not. You know, that's why the scripture says, wisdom crieth without, she uttered her voice in the streets. Wisdom is not in them temples made with hands, as saith the scriptures. The Lord dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the scriptures in the book of Acts. You know, so all we got to do is repent and return back to the Lord. He gave us the breakdown of who to follow. I'm going to get some more. It's Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandment of God. So this Bible is not written by a white man. This is divine, holy words. Okay, as it says in Psalms, great was the company. But it says the Lord gave the word and great was the company that published it. In the book of Peter, it says the prophecies came not in the old time by the will of man, but by holy men as they spake, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's in the book of Psalms and that's in the book of Peter's. Okay, Romans 15 and 4 tells you these things that was written were written for our learning. So those are three precepts along with this that prove this Bible is for us. It's not a white man book. This was orchestrated by the Heavenly Father. Second Ezra 6 tells the Lord thought about all things. Okay. It says, and the law that endureth forever. So that's a clean cut. It says the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life. And we're coming back to life. That breath is entering into us. The valley of the dry bones is waking up. Because they rehearsing the righteous acts. The Holy Spirit is dealing at these last days. And it says, but such as leave it shall die. You know? And guess what? When we laugh it, the law, statutes, and commandments, and we started to do our own thing, we started to die, okay? We started to decrease. We started to downgrade in stature and wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord because we didn't keep the law, okay? We didn't keep the words written therein. That's why we went into slavery. That's why we went into captivity. That's why we speak English and look the way we look. That's why we even telling Israel, you're Israel, into this very day, you know? It says, turn thee, O Jacob, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, so-called, and whoever bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it really don't matter how you look or what you speak or where you at, because Israel is scattered everywhere looking and speaking like all these nations, okay? And it says, take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof that thou mayest be illuminated, so you can have that light, so you can be in the know. And not in this wicked, dark, perverse, crooked generation, which tells you the law is done away with, which tells you you only live once, which tells you the Big Bang Theory and evolution and all this madness, man. And the Bible is a fairy tale and it was a snake in a garden. They ate an apple and just the madness and the wise fables that this world just come up with and the wicked vibrations that are just flowing through this place. It's madness, man. And it's the only light and it's the only guide that we got. Okay. Give not thy honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nations. O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known to us. Be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. And that's what it is, man. But if we come back to the Lord, he got us. He said he's going to do that. It's Jeremiah 31 and, 30, 30, 31 and 33. And this is also stated again in Hebrews. Okay, this is what Yahweh Shai came to fulfill. This is what Yahweh Shai came to preach. This is what Yahweh Shai came to teach, man. And this is what Yahweh Shai is coming back to set in order. According to prophecy. It's Jeremiah 31 and 33. But it shall be, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. 
After those days, say, if you have, I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So the Lord's going to write his laws in us. So how is the law done away with? And they shall teach no man, every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, know the Lord. Because right now we teaching the Lord, we rehearsing the righteous acts, like, yeah, come back to you. How about Shem Al Shai? He's going to uh, increase you. He's going to open your mind. He's going to have mercy. That's what we're doing right now, but we're not going to be doing this no more. Why? Because the, law, the Lord finna write his laws in us, man. We're going to be in God mode. We're going to be Yasharala again. We're going to be the sons of God, as it says in the scriptures. It's written in our law. It says, ye are gods, man. But our people are settling for less, okay? Everybody want to be everything in this world, but nobody want to serve the Lord in truth, sincerity, and charity and be immortal. You know, and it takes times, man. It, it definitely takes times. You definitely have to have the right group structure and the guidance. And we have that, man. It says, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them. See, if you have, well, Father, forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more. It's from the least to the greatest. <laughs> they going to know you how about Shem Al Shah. That's why it says in Matthews, when you go back to it, it says, verse 19, for whosoever there shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach, uh, and shall teach, and shall teach them the same salaki, and shall teach man so he shall be called the least in the kingdom. So if you breaking the laws and you teaching madness and the law done away with, you're gonna be the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do them and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So whoever doing the work of the Lord, okay, who's ever out there on the highways and byways as the Lord say do, okay, whoever teaching this word and trying their best, man. They're going to be called the greatest, starting with the elect, man, which we labor and hope to be. Okay, we're not saved. Okay. Let me get this other scripture. It's Romans 10 and verse 4. For Yahweh Shah is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So Yahweh Shah is the end of the law. The law not done away where he came to fulfill. So if you believe in the Lord, you believe he came, you believe he died, you want to be saved, you believe he died for you, you believe he's merciful to help save you and heal you, then you're going to do what he say do. You're going to keep the law, statutes, and commandments because that's a part of him. That's his word that endure forever. He is the word. He is the law. He is the way. He is the light. He is the truth. And being in this flesh, being in America, the Lord still loves us and care about us and think about us, man. Uh, we just got to always remember that law is not done away with. It's a few scriptures, man. I mean, there's others, you know, but I'm going to end it with this. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So what's the sum of it? Fear God. Okay. And the Proverbs tell you the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise instruction. Scripture tells you the fear of the Lord driveth away sins. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him. You have to be taught this fear, okay? Whether it's by word or whether it's by experience and adversity. The elect has that, okay? Two-thirds lack that. Two-thirds rejected the Lord. Two-thirds care nothing about the law. Even if they try to keep the law, you know, on the outward appearance, but inwardly they're wicked. Just as you see in these churches today, and just as you see in these, uh, uh, some of these Israelite camps amongst their leaders and congregation, man. It says, fear God and keep his commandments. Keeping his commandments is rehearsing the righteous acts, the law that's not done away with. For this is the whole duty of man. And that's what man should be doing. Fearing the Lord and rehearsing the righteous acts towards each other, man. Striving and trying in the midst of this wicked, perverse, crooked generation. You're going to fall. You're going to mess up. You're going to get weak. But you got to keep pushing no matter what. There's no turning back. There's no saying no. Because guess what? If you do, you're going to get destroyed. So it's better to humble down and be subject now, bow down now, <laughs> before the Lord come back, man, or you're going to be on his bad side, man. Confess him now in the, in the midst of this wicked, perverse, crooked generation. He's going to confess you. But if you deny him, he's going to deny you, man. If you chase things that is of not, the Lord's going to destroy you, man. As simple as that. However way you see fit, because guess what? You've done things, I've done things worthy of death. The difference is, if you believe and you hope, the Lord. The Lord's not going to remember that. If you have the elect, the Lord's not going to remember that. If you're trying, the Lord knows, and you, He's not going to remember that, not lay that to you, man. 
You gotta forgive that. That's why he gave his only begotten son. So Lord, we'll hope the last was edifying. I want to give all praises, glory, honor to you. Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh, Shai, double honors to our elders and apostles of great millstone, which the most up set up to push his word down true sincerity.